We've got CJ calling in from Kansas saying evolution is in Genesis 1 uh, and uh, Genesis 2 is scientifically accurate. CJ, you're on AXP. How are you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm pretty good. Right on. So I'm going to go ahead and crack open my Bibli here and, and see if I can keep up with you. Go ahead and lay on us your uh, your explanation for how these two things work. Okay, yeah. So uh, I was hoping I'd be able to come in a little uh, sooner. Uh, this is my first time finding you guys. So Sorry. No, you had that. That's all right. I didn't know you had that short of time. So I'll just kind of shoot through it. I hope uh, hope it, hope it can be concise and you guys can keep up. But in Genesis one verse eleven, it said, mm -hmm. "Then God said, let the land produce." So that right there is evolution because the land produced the uh, the uh, seed bearing plants and the seed bearing uh, trees. I'm sorry, the fruit bearing trees. Then Genesis 1 verse 20, it says, and God said, let the water team with living creatures. That right there is the oceanic production of evolution um, because the water produced the sea animals. And Genesis so, 1 verse 24, it says, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I just, I, I, I have questions about both of those things. And I, I do you have much further for you to go? Because you can finish your premise if there's a little bit left, or it might be better for us to tackle those two things first and then move on. What do you think? Yeah, just one more. Um, okay. Then it says in Genesis 1, verse 24, and God said, let the land produce living creatures. So 11 was the land producing uh, basically food. 24 was the land producing the land animals. And 20 was the water producing the sea animals. Okay, um, so I'm going to read my Bible here and just as, as the first con issue that I have. And then the second issue that I have is actually the evolutionary history of, of these things. So first off, I, I have number 11 here. It says, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed and fruit trees yielding fruit of its kind, blah, blah, blah. That matches up. Um, then 24, it says, the uh, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after its kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast after its kind, and it was so. So I, I, I think that one matched what you're saying as well. The only issue that I have was on number 20, and maybe I just misheard you. I just want to make sure I'm not misrepresenting what you're saying. Verse 20, what I have here is, God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and the fowl that may fly. So the water produces living creatures, and it specifically includes birds in that and from the water. Yes, yeah, sea, yeah, sea and sky animals. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Okay. So then now that we clarified that, there's a lot of issues there because we understand that birds evolved from reptiles, which were already land animals. So if you're saying that this is an evidence of evolution or this is an account of evolution, I should say, then that's wrong. The water didn't bring forth birds. You can say the water brought forth land animals because that makes sense. You know, you have Tiktaalik crawling up on the land, giving rise to Ichthyostega. That's where you get all the tetrapods. And eventually those tetrapods give, uh, turn into reptiles. And some of those reptiles go to birds. So that would track. But saying the birds come from the water and then specifically later on saying that different things like cattle and insects come from the earth, that doesn't track. Yeah, so to respond, um, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing through it because I want to make sure I can we can talk as much as possible. But after yeah. verse 20, it also says, it also continues, and let the birds increase on the earth. So that's Yes, something. but that's not where birds came from. Other, but, and that, that's, that's what's, what's yeah. catching me here is that it says that birds come from the water and insects come from the earth. Insects evolve directly yeah. from uh -huh. crustaceans. So we've got, you know, insects should be coming from the water. All tetrapods should be coming from the water. All living things on land should be coming from the water, um, including plants. And back here in the number 11, it said, let the earth bring forth grass and everything. Well, plants as we know them today, land plants came about around 500 million years ago from aquatic plants. Mm. And before that, we had fungi. And it doesn't have any mention of fungi in here. So mm. like... And that's one of the, the issues that I'm having with it is that if this is a chronological um, account of the of the creation of the world, it's in the wrong order. Yeah. <laughs> you've got plants first, then sea animals, when it should be the other way around. Right. So you've got things in the wrong order, and also from the wrong you know uh, uh, generation. Like they're they're coming from the wrong places. So I, I'm sure you have other things, but like I, I would like to tackle that if we can before we move on. Is that 
the the you know the earth did not bring forth plants water did the water brought forth all the other animals as well um birds didn't come directly from water um nor did cattle there was a million steps in between there so why doesn't it make any reference to any of those other steps and why does it have things coming from the wrong places yeah i can explain i can respond to both the water uh the water rebuttal and the uh I believe you said insects, and also, if I recall correctly, yeah. birds. Is that, is that is that spot on? Okay. So, as far as the um, everything coming from water, that goes into a whole nother explanation that I would have to break down. Um, if you do, if you do, I know you guys wouldn't be may may not be interested in this, but if you were to do a water study in the Bible, that literally goes all the way back to Genesis one two, where there's a claim that water existed before everything. In Genesis yeah. one two, it's before day it's before day one, and uh, if you do a deep study in the Bible, if you do a deep study in the Bible about water, um, and then you can literally just go on the internet and and you can type in uh, did water exist before Earth? And scientists are slowly finding out that most of the water on Earth does not belong to Earth. Yeah, but so but the that's the, the that's the best response I can give um, right now because yeah. I can't go into deep. That, study. That would be a good conversation for later. So please do call back in next time I'm on and talk about it. Um, but like, as far as just this is concerned, because like, I agree with it, like water didn't come from or the carbonaceous chondrites that we should talk about. Like there's a lot of shit there that, that would be an interesting conversation. But I think just sticking to this for right now, um, is there a way that you can account for these without getting into that conversation or, or no? Yeah, um, so... I can, but it will be incomplete. That's, that's the only issue. But I'm, I have okay. no problem t uh, still, still addressing the other things. So we'll, we'll try to give you the benefit of the doubt. Your, okay, thanks. As far as the rebuttal about um, birds coming from reptiles, if you continue a little bit past Genesis 1, verse 20, there's another interjection that says, and let birds increase upon the earth. So that, to me, is an account of the reptiles becoming birds. I mean, it's so pretty. It also says, and let I have to say, sir, on the earth, so and, 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 and that is true. It is vague, and that's why I wish it was possible to do a deep study. But unfortunately, right. It just feels a little bit like post hoc like, rationalization to me, I'm afraid. I can't really shake it that. It does, yeah. yeah. But but maybe maybe we're missing something. So let's go to your second premise for now, and then we'll we'll see like how we can tie this whole thing together. Your second premise that I have on the call screen here is that Genesis two is scientifically accurate. Would you please explain what you mean by that? And maybe we can try to like suss out some common ground here. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me just go down to my notes for that. Um, so sure. I'll keep it short, short and brief. It, it still may have some issues due to time, time constraint. But um, so in Genesis chapter two, um, verses twenty to twenty-four, is uh, the passage where God says, um, "It's not good for man to be alone," and He says, "I'll make a helper suitable for Adam." And he puts him into basically a coma. And he opens up his side, side takes out his rib, and closes the place up with flesh and creates Eve. So one right. of the uh, verses is when he responds to this creation, and he says, uh, "This is now bone of the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man." Um, if we go with that premise, that women should be bone of the man's bones and flesh of the man's flesh. Um, I like to look at this on the basis of chromosomes, and you'll, you'll understand why. Um, so if we take the X and the XY chromosomes and copy that twice, you get XX. First X for the man's bones, and the second X for the man's flesh. When you put that together, you get XX chromosomes, and those are found in bone marrow. That's so, not right. how chromosomes work, oh, no. as far as I'm aware. Yeah, that's, the Y chromosome, a, 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 basically a corruption of the eggs. Sorry, I, want, I, I didn't hear the other guy. I wanted to hear what he was saying, sorry, because both of you guys' voices were blending. I didn't hear the other guy. I think he had an accent. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a relatively scientific layman, but that's not how I understand chromosomes to work. And also, you're completely ignoring the fact that making a human out of a rib is not scientifically accurate. That is magic. Well, I mean, in all fairness, let's let's say that that tracks. Let's say, okay, he took the rib and he took the genetic material from the rib and used it to make another human being. A couple of issues that I have with that. 
um, setting aside, you know, we, we talked a little bit on the last show about, uh, you know, how there's different ways to be female and not all necessitate having exactly two X chromosomes, but like setting that aside and, and let's just say we're going with the, the standard middle school model of X, Y equals male and X, X equals female. We'll assume that for now. Um, you get those two X's from your two parents. You have one X from a father and one X from a mother. Um, the two X's are not genetically identical. They're not a copy of each other. And usually one of them shrinks down to what's called a bar body and isn't really used. And from one cell to the next, different X chromosomes are activated. So like all of that is to say, if all God had to work with was the one X that Adam had, it, it wouldn't really have tracked that that was a thing that wouldn't have made a tremendous amount of sense. Also, if he was working with Adam's genetic material, it would also stand to reason that G Eve would be otherwise genetically identical to Adam. And we see a tremendous amount of variation in the human genome across you know, uh, populations all around the world. So the, all that variation wouldn't have been able to come from anywhere. This would have been a deeply and, and, and tragically incestual couple who are having sex with their own children who are all genetically identical because they're all coming from the same two parents that are also genetically identical. So like, even if you want to say, yeah. well, if you squint at this and turn it sideways, it kind of looks like chromosomes that just doesn't track. So uh, again, I hate to keep saying this because it makes it sound like I'm just trying to throw out that, throw out something I, in the air to hurry up and try to- I make understand we're short on time. I'm trying to give you as much time as we have. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right, exactly. So it, those other questions, trust me, I, I, I had similar questions, and it required more more deep study into the Bible for me to get those those answers. I mean, I, I won't profess to have all of them, because I obviously can't, no one can, but, um, you know, whether theists are atheists, we won't have all the answers. But um, there are other steps in this process that I couldn't get to that could maybe help there, but as far as to just rebut the the one thing that stuck out the most to what you said, since we're short on time, about how um, both X chromosomes aren't uh, necessarily matched in 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 what we might claim to say is the female chromosomes. Um, for what I'm trying to introduce, I could understand why they wouldn't necessarily match, since from this premise that I'm presenting, the first X is for bone and the second X is for flesh. So. Again, unfortunately, the, the conversation I would like to have, which would probably be, I don't know, an hour and a half or something, I don't know, three hours. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys like talking that much, too. Unfortunately, we can't have it. So, But you do uh, understand that if, if you were to take DNA from Adam's bones and flesh, it would be the same DNA, and he only would have the same one X chromosome to give, right? I'm sorry, repeat that for me. I was say, you said that the different X chromosomes are accounted for because it's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So one comes from bone, one comes from flesh. If you were to take DNA samples from Adam's bone and flesh, it would be the same DNA with the same one X chromosome to give. Right. So where fr from whence do we derive different genes and different X chromosomes today if they're all coming from the same one twice? So that goes into another study, kind of like how the study went in about water, how that goes into a different deep study that, that, that takes you on a different route in the Bible. That question takes you on a different route also, and that kind of kind of answers your question about what about incest. Um, that that starts off being deeply studied in Genesis 3, which I'm not on yet because I've, I've only introduced Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. So to answer that question, we would have to go into Genesis 3. You also said in your call screen here that Genesis 2 is scientifically accurate. Are you only talking about Adam and Eve with that, or are you talking about the rest of it too? Yeah, I wasn't referring to, to, to the entire Genesis 2. I mean, I could, but that's not what I'm presenting right now. I'm only presenting the creation of Eve. Well, I'm, I'm asking you, do you believe that the rest of Genesis 2 is also accurate? Yeah, I do. But again, it's still okay. requires deep study. It's not something that... Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, then that's an issue for me because we started this conversation talking about Genesis 1, where just as an example, there's a, the, the entirety of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 are very different creation stories. But like one thing that we talked about was yeah. Genesis 1 verse 20 says that the waters bring forth birds. But then Genesis 2 verse 19 says out of the ground, the Lord uh, created the fowls of the air. So did water or earth make birds because Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 say different things? 
So they, they, they don't. And this is what I was trying to, to, to introduce to you in, in uh, Genesis 1 at, at about verse 20, where it says, let the water seem as living creatures. And then it also gives account of the birds coming out of the water. But then it continues, and let birds increase on the earth. So it's giving two accounts of where the birds came from, water and earth. However, another thing I'm trying to present to you, which we can't deep study, is if you deep study water, which is claimed in Genesis 1, verse 2, to already exist before creation, and science has also confirmed that all the water on earth is not from earth. That, that, that right there means that the earth was, was wet. You can, you can technically call it clay. I know the Bible says the dust of the ground, but if you actually deep study that dust of the ground juxtaposed with the deep study of water, you will find out it was made from clay. So I, I, this is what I'm trying to say is that it's difficult to, you're, you're going to be lost on, where, on what I'm talking about because it's a bunch well, of... It's things, the, the surface level things about the Genesis account that don't require any deep study from where I'm standing. And it feels like this deep study is just another word for contorting the, like, whatever patterns you can find to try and match this up and squeezing the Bible into science. The Bible says that the earth was created before the sun and it wasn't. Like, well, that's, an, yeah, that, that's another deep study. I, I, I'm sorry, man. I know this is annoying. I, I really, I'm sorry. I, I'm just baffled because it's I've been a, deep study of science. It's like it yeah, says he created the earth and then the sun and the stars and the moon. And we yeah, know I, that that's not right. And it, I don't it also need says that plants study. came before the sun as well. And like yeah. that's that's the thing is like it. it I, I understand what you're saying. You're saying that you have a deep, detailed, de a deep dive into the Bible that you think derives some meaning from this. Um, and like the, the the thing that's hanging me up is that there are other creation myths that more accurately and more succinctly align with scientific reality. Why don't you believe in those? And if God is real, and this is an actual you know, account of what he's saying, why make it so damn confusing and so deeply frustrating to dig through rather than just saying, I did this, this, and this? Like, it, it, if he's ever read the method section of a scientific paper, you know, you just say, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and these are the reasons why. And that's it. And like, it seems here, like, in order to have to do this ridiculous deep diving over and over and over into all these different topics to try to twist and contort and derive some meaning. Well, it is, it said this, but what it means is that. And if you look at this other thing in the context of that thing, it actually, you know, in on top of that, there are other creation myths that are, like I said, more accurate and align more, more succinctly and more easily with scientific reality. It seems like this is a really, really lousy way for this God to convey its message or more reasonably, it seems like this is just something that, you know, a bunch of goat herders wrote 2,000 years ago, and, and now we're still looking at it as if it means anything, and it just doesn't. Do you or understand not, where, where I'm coming be, from here? And not to be derogatory, like, go, like the, the most learned men of the time observed and made sure. wrong observations and just made stuff up. Sure, yeah. But, but it was still one of our first attempts at science, and because it was one of our first, it was our, our worst. Like, so do, do you understand like where we're coming from here? Like, I'm not trying to just dismiss you out of hand. I'm just saying that like no, what you're giving me seems overwhelmingly convoluted and there's other creation myths that are better. And without all the creation myths, we have a much more accurate story. So like, why is this necessary? And why would a God make it this way? So you brought up a lot of things that I didn't have a chance to interject about. Um, sure. I, I wish we had more time because you, you also asked um well first about uh, the other guy i can't see you guys of course in order for me to be in the queue but um he said uh that the bible says the earth was created um first yeah in the in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth genesis, in genesis, right I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna explain that in in genesis chapter one verse one when it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that's just a statement it then begins to explain how that creation started on the next verse. Verse one is just a statement. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You can think of it as a, as a declarative statement. That's just a statement. Then verse two, and it says, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So depending on what version you have. On, and that on, still on, contradicts it because the, the earth was never in darkness because the sun was there first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's that's, that's the thing is he... I, I I don't want 
CJ, I don't want you to read the whole thing to us. Like, I, I promise we've read it. I've got one open in front of me right now. I've read it to Genesis myself. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it. yes, you're right. I, I, I'll, I'll grant you that God created the heavens and the earth was just a summary statement, and then we went from there. That's fine. But then he makes light before he makes the sun. And then he makes day and night before he's made the earth, which is the how we measure day and night is by the rotation of the earth and which side of the earth the sun is hitting. So he makes light and day and night before there's anything to create or measure those things. So like, are you going to say that like that part is also out of context and, and that's just a summary and we'll get into it later? Or is maybe this something that just doesn't line up with scientific reality? I've never said once out of context. That hasn't come out of my mouth once. I've only said deep study. I have never said. I'm paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing you. Okay. Okay. But uh, the only reason why I take that seriously, because I know that a lot of Christians, I, I, would, I would prefer to, to just call them false Christians. They like to throw out out of context when they can't answer a question instead of just saying, sorry, I don't know. I haven't studied that yet. So that's the only reason that's fair. I take it seriously when people say out of context. No, but that's that's fair. What I do want to, what I do want to say is, to finish to the response to the other guy, because he brought up, he brought it up and it, it jumped out to me. When it says now the earth was formless and empty, when Moses wrote that, he's he's right he's he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't literally possessing his hand and writing. He's inspired by the Holy Spirit. So as a human, he's going to write now the earth. The earth is not created until day three. When 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 the Bible says let dry let dry ground appear. So earth is ground. The earth is a combination of ground and water. So the earth was not actually created until day three. So when Moses said, now the earth was formless and empty, he is not, when he says now the earth, a better way to have written that would say, now the space was formless and empty. That'd be a better way to write that. But again, he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's not possessed by the Holy Spirit. So that's not written. And, and th th those are claims you're making that we cannot, that are unfalsifiable. And you have to understand. I mean, again, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt, but I'm finding this thoroughly unconvincing. I'm sorry. I just, it, just, it all feels like post hoc rationalization, trying to fit a square peg in a round hole, and it just doesn't doesn't land for yeah, me. I remember when I was so so. Um, at one point, there's there's a really great book called Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Um, and it's it's uh, she's a, a, a biologist. She's a botanist. Um, and she's also Potawatomi, if I remember correctly. Um, and so the book is about interweaving Native American um, outlooks on the world, Native American worldviews um, with science. And it's a really, really cool book. And, and at, at the beginning, um, one of the first chapters, I think it actually might be the first chapter. Um, she talks about the legend of Sky Woman. And the story is, uh, it's a creation myth from, I believe it is from her culture. So I'm 99% sure it's a Potawatomi creation myth, um, where um, Sky Woman is a woman who falls out of the sky, and she comes here to Earth, and the Earth is completely covered in water, um, and all the animals are there, and the animals come over. She get the, the, the swans or geese or something, I think it is the geese, catch her and make sure she doesn't fall into the water. And then the animals all work together to find some mud on the bottom of the, the, the water and they pull it up and she smears it over the back of a turtle. And, and she, she, that's how dry land is created. And she has in her hand, a bunch of seeds and she plants a garden and that's where all the land comes from and all the plants and all these things come from. That story I could sit here and argue makes a lot more sense. There's a lot of, there were several times in Earth's history where it was completely covered in water because it was much hotter and we didn't have ice caps and we didn't have permafrost or anything like that. Um, and dry land came up later as the continents hardened after the end of the Hadean epoch. Um, other animal types were here before humans evolved 200,000 years ago. Um, we are you know very young and coming into this. We survived on a, a, off of other animals and, and we can translate that as their kindness as actually us hunting them or whatever. Um, the planting of seeds relates to the invention of agriculture and things like that. Like I can do the same thing that you're doing and say, here's this story that beautifully and poetically tells about the creation of the planet and the creation of human species and, and where everything comes from. And you just have to squint at it and turn your head a little bit. And it all makes sense scientifically. I can do the exact same thing and it will mean exactly as much nothing as what you're saying to me. Um, and I'm wondering like why, why not make it something more clear? 
Why not make it something that's more easily understandable? I can point to 30 other creation myths right now that, that, that have similar roots that I can say, oh, well, you know, in the, I think it's the Lakota story, talks about Ea being the, the, the everything in the whole, I'm going to butcher this story, so forgive me, the Lakota people watching this, but I, yeah, the, the, that these Ea's, the, this all-encompassing being that, that it embodies everything in the whole universe, and he takes a piece of himself and squeezes it, and from there we get the earth, and then he squeezes it further until it bleeds blue, and that's where we get the waters, and like, that sounds an awful lot like the whole universe and gravity forming planets and and and, and the the oceans so you know forming and the the continents solidifying like that same kind of thing you know what i mean like i just i i think you can do the same song and dance that you're giving us right now with damn near any creation myth from any culture ever and it won't be backed by science because it's not something that we can actually go out and independently verify and i think what you're doing is you're making a lot of excuses for something that simply is a story that was told 2,000 years ago. And I don't know why you give more credence to that story than any other story. Well, I, I won't disagree with what you're saying, that you can you, you can justify anything. I'm not disagreeing with the fact that you can justify any, anything. I also don't disagree with the fact that you believe I'm justifying this. I don't disagree with nothing you just said. Yes, you can justify anything you want to, which is why I said from the beginning, you would have to decide to deep study this. I, 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 I can't make this make sense to you. It's not possible, and I'm not trying to. I'm just simply presenting what, what I believe. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to try to figure out how to make you believe this, but all due respect, sir, to both of y'all, both of you, I'm not going to yeah. do that. And I understand what you're saying is, you, what, what you're curious about is what makes this, more important to more important or 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 more valid i guess is a, is a better word choice than all the other ones when you can just as easily justify all the other ones especially when personally when it comes to you all of the other ones seem to make more sense to you than they do to me this all comes down to personal belief that's, that's why i'm not trying to make you see anything that i see because you're what you're basically saying is well to me i don't see it and i'm saying is to me i do see it and so what i'm what i'm so, so to, to make just one last rebuttal, um, sure. and this is really quick, so it's, it's going to be really short and sweet. As far as I already responded to the whole, now the earth was formless and empty, and how the earth wasn't created until day three. And so that should read, now the space was formless and empty. Um, when On day one, when God said, let there be light, that was not the creation of sunlight. Sun, all, all the sunlight was not created until day four. Day one, when he said, let there be light, was the light of heaven. That was who created heaven, which is why it says Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Genesis, okay. The, the day one. For, it should have said the heavens and space. Heaven. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. For, forgive me. I, 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 I think that. what you just said, I think before, before you got to that point, and I'm sorry, we're, I, this is the last thing I'll ask you, and then we'll, then we'll have to move on. But like the, the thing that you just said before you started talking about, you know, what, what light actually means and everything, because frankly it's it's immaterial to what we're talking about here what you just said i think was really elucidating to the, the issue is you're saying that you accept my argument that there's you know all these different beliefs and we can do special pleading for any one of them and have the same argument but you believe in this thing and i don't and it all comes down to belief and that right there is the crux of the issue for me is that i don't believe anything about science like when I, I study science and teach science for a living, I don't believe in the Big Bang. I don't believe in evolution. I don't believe in the formation of the earth. I know those things happen because of what the evidence leads me to. And the evidence isn't trying to reinterpret some dusty old book from the Bronze Age. It's looking at what the universe actually says and changing my mind when new evidence comes along. We used to not believe in evolution. And then we had evidence for it and we changed our mind. We used to not believe in the, the age of the universe. And then we had new evidence come up and we changed our minds. So this is the major difference is that you're looking at this book and you're saying, what can I find to justify this book? And what I'm doing is looking at the universe and saying, what do you got to tell me? What's going on? So it, you're, you're, you're framing this as a matter of belief, one belief versus another. And it's simply not that. It's not me holding up a, a, a copy of Origin of Species and saying, I have this book, and you hold up a picture of the, a copy of the Bible and say, I have this book. It's all of this evidence, all of this independently variable, to, uh, verifiable, testable, repeatable evidence about the universe versus you saying, I have this book. 
And I, I just I wonder if you understand and appreciate the difference in those two things. This is not a matter of belief for us. What I'm saying is that wasn't your original assertion. Your original assertion was I can do the same thing you're doing with your book with another book. Your original assertion yes. did not include because but I know your original assertion did not include what you're trying to say it included now, which was I believe in science and so I use science to, to give to give me my personal belief. You did not bring that up in your original assertion. Now that you have no, I, I, I didn't because I was trying to get you to understand that what you're doing can be done with anything and it means nothing the same way that I feel like it means nothing now. You cannot do that with science, however. I cannot say, like, there, there's no instance in which I, as a biologist, am going to say, well, I know evolution is true, therefore, if I see this thing, I'm just going to go ahead and say that, that that aligns with my evolutionary doctrine, right? That That isn't how it works for us. And so if I were to find something that, when against the evolutionary model, I would take that into account and either the evolutionary model would change or it would be discarded. So there's no faith, there's no belief, there's no post hoc rationalization or justification going on there. What you're doing is saying, here is the conclusion that I want, now I'll go find the evidence. And what I'm offering to you is that you can do that with anything and come up with the same wrong conclusion. What you could be doing instead is saying, here's the evidence, what conclusion can I draw from it? And if you do it that way, you're going to be right a lot more often, and you're not going to be able to back the Bible. What I'm trying to tell you is you literally just made an assumption. You're saying that I went from the Bible and then went to look for evidence that backed it up. That would only be true if I was indoctrinated from childhood and believed this from the beginning. Then I would have had gone to the Bible and then only went to research that. That's not what happened. I've never believed in evolution because I never, I never at that at that time when evolution was being taught to us. As soon as I learned about the missing link, I was like, "Come on, how are you going to teach something with the missing link?" I'll listen, but how are you going to teach it with the missing link? I don't know any other theory that people accept with a missing link. I don't know anybody that accepts any other theories for life with the missing link. So no, that is no. To my I'm, I'm sorry. I I Not promise I'm going to let you finish speaking, but just quickly that that causes me pain. Um. I study and teach evolution for a living. The missing link isn't a real concept in evolutionary biology. That is a creationist talking point that deliberately misrepresents evolution and creates a fallacious argument to make evolution seem like a just so story. That's not a real thing. And, and, and that's, I'm sorry, that's not a good reason. If you want to talk about evolution, we are out of time, but like, I would really like it if you would call back and ask questions about evolutionary science, because that is what I specialize in. And I bet you anything, especially based on what you just said, that you you misunderstand it. And that's why you don't believe it. And I know you can turn that around and say the same thing about the Bible with me. But like I'm not very gonna... often people, creationists will say they don't believe in evolution because of the missing link or because how can random chance make something like an eyeball or you just have faith in Darwin or, uh, you know, wh why are there still monkeys if humans came from monkeys or any of these other things which are really, really, really basic misunderstandings about the science that goes to show that you have been cheated out of your education of the actual science. If you want to address that, you can. If you want to finish what you're saying, you can, and, and then, then we'll move on. Yeah, I'll finish this last thing because what, so what you're doing is you're you're making a lot of assumptions based on other Christians you talk to. I, I, all, what I just said about the missing link, I, I I I will concede on what you're saying that you you got you have a degree in this area. I talked to evolutionists and they said there was a missing link. So let's I, I'll concede that maybe those people just don't know what they're talking about. Okay, cool. Maybe those people didn't know what they're talking about, but those were not creationists who told me that. Those were evolutionists who told me there was a missing link. You assume there was creationists right away just because I'm a Christian. That's not how I came to that conclusion. You keep doing this, man. No, I'm, I, I'm, I'm only a little bit irritated because I don't like when people assume I came to my conclusions the same way all the other Christians have. I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm not all other Christians. That's like me assuming it's because you're an atheist. You like all other atheists. I wouldn't do that. So everything that, that you're disagreeing with is completely based on you thinking I think just like everybody else. I don't. That's not how I came to none of my conclusions. So that's the last thing I want to say to you is that please don't keep putting me into a box of how all these other Christians came to conclusions. That's why I, I feel like I feel like that's the reason we came. All, to all we're saying is that it feels like you're trying to fit. Like you, you want to prove the Bible is scientifically accurate, and you're trying to find evidence for it, and we feel that that's a 
uh, uh, not a very good way to actually come to truth. Like, I, this is what I want to be true, and I'm going to go and find the evidence for it. Whereas right. what we're saying is that the better way to go about things is to just accept what is and draw conclusions from what the evidence tells you rather than trying to aim for a goal um, and be prepared to be wrong and to be corrected. Um, mm. So uh, apologies if we, we cast any aspersions on why you are doing what you're doing, but it does feel like you want the Bible to be scientifically accurate and you're going to... You, by golly, you're going to find the evidence to, to back it up and make any... Like, you're saying that Earth should be written as space, and that's, again, like, that's an assertion. And you say, oh, you've got to do a deep study, a deep study, a deep study, a deep study. And I'm, like, the very surface saying, this doesn't make any sense to me. And you're essentially saying that it would if I studied it enough. But, I, I, I mean, Gordon Bennett, I, I, I'd be... My mind would be blown if I could ever get to that point, but uh, I really have trouble believing that that's the case, sir. I'm sorry. That's, that's kind of where I'm at as well. It, it, mm. it, it seems like you, I, I don't doubt for a second that you've done sufficient, you know, research into this, but it seems like the motivations and the, the methodologies of your research are, are spurious. And it seems like you're doing, and forgive me, you're going to be mad at me for saying this, but like, it seems like you're doing what a lot of creationists and what a lot of theists do in, in like, you know, Jamie just said, saying, I want this to be true. And therefore you're trying to fit things into those boxes. And you're right. I do make a lot of assumptions about what you're saying. And that's because I've been doing this for a long time and I've been arguing with people for a long time. And especially the people who say I'm not like other Christians and I don't believe these things for the same reasons are the ones who gave me the exact same arguments that you've been giving me. Um, so just, it, it, it's not novel to me. And for that reason, maybe I'm, I'm overlooking something. I hope you do call back next time that I'm on. Um, I'll be on again in December. Um, and I hope you talk to me about evolution because again, it's something that I study and teach all the time. And based on what you're telling me, it sounds an awful lot. Like you're making the exact same kind of fallacious arguments and the exact same kind of poor, I should say like bad assumptions that other people do. And you said that you learned it from evolutionists, quote, quote, which that isn't a thing, but whatever. Um, it sounds like maybe they're colloquialisms or something that you you took then to a Christian source. I don't know. It just, regardless of how you came to these conclusions and how unique you think that is, the conclusions that you're giving me at face value are not unique. That That's what I'm trying to get across to you. And I, I'm trying to find a polite way to say that without sounding patronizing, because I understand how that can sound kind of shitty. And I really don't mean to be. It, it, it just it however you came to it what you're giving us right now is not anything that we haven't heard before and it's as unimpressive as the last time that we heard it do, do you understand where i'm coming from here okay that that's fine yeah yeah all, all i all i want is for you guys to stop saying i am doing this i, I prefer for you to say it seems like because i would never say to y'all y'all doing one two three four i would never say that i would say i would say sir it seems like that your line of thinking is starting here and then ending here. Okay. Just, apologies, oh, that's fair. apologies that we came across that way, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we don't want to be that way. Yeah. And I'm sorry so, for how charged up I am. This is I mean, just, this, this is as much as you guys get charged up from because I've listened to a few of y'all shows and I don't even like how some of the Christians like the, like 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 I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but calling in to mock to mock atheists is no different than atheists mocking Christians. So. I understand y'all might y'all might be on guard too, just like I am, because you're used to hearing the same old stuff. But I'm also used For to sure. putting me into a box too, so I'm I'm not doing that with y'all either. So I would just appreciate it if it was more. It seems like you're doing this instead of you literally are doing this, because that's not how I came to my conclusions. And a quick plug, if you want to have a longer conversation, do absolutely call back in when um, when Forrest is back on. But also feel free to come into the AC... Yeah, December? The, yeah, uh, and, and come back. Come to the uh, ACA Discord. Uh, plenty of people there will be happy to spend hours talking to you about what your findings in a, in a, in a pretty uh, inclusive setting. So, you know, again, me mate Kelly, good guy, plug, plug the Discord, very cool fan run thing. Yeah, I, I'm looking, and right now, I, this might change in the future, so keep your eyes open, but it looks like I'm scheduled to be on December 10th, um, as I'll be hosting in that day. So, like, just, you know, at that time, if you want to call in and talk about evolution, I would love to do it. Do you have a, a time, December 10th? Sorry? 
do you have a, a time December tenth or a time frame? You I don't know. It's uh, I thirty. I do this for a living, and I'd never remember. I think it's isn't it four thirty? Four thirty Central Standard Time, which is the best Standard Time. Yeah. Uh, same. Yeah. Same great time. Same great place. And we'll be here on on December tenth. That's where I'll be. Okay. okay yeah. So the, uh, I understand this is you guys' platform. So obviously, I can't I can't try to pose that you guys do some kind of deep study with me. I can't pose that. So the only thing I can say in response is if you haven't already to to also consider open opening your eyes towards where I'm coming from because I understand what you're saying. Of course I don't don't fully understand because I, I I don't have your experience. I understand you're saying you've had these arguments from other other Christians also. But what I can say is I unfortunately I've never met a Christian say anything that I'm saying to y'all. I know that might sound crazy to y'all, but the Christians I meet are the ones who just say just believe, just have faith and that's it. And I just think that's ridiculous. You can't you can't even have faith until you have belief in the first place. So that's all I'm saying is that I would just like the respect of not putting me into a box. And I think I think we've addressed it. I think that we've we've come to the point where right. where we've we've you know, I think we've addressed it and I think we've given you a lot of time and a lot of patience for this. So yeah. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, we're, yeah, you're that's right. all right. Thank you. We're, we're going to go and move on. Thank you for calling in, CJ, genuinely. And I hope you do call back to talk about evolution with me. All right. See you later.